All right, it's not a 60.1 on this year FM dial, and welcome now to the Rooty Absolutely with the Idiot Thing feature. So, quite the first time in quite a while, we are coming to you live here on YouTube <laughs> with the Idiot Thing, and we also have Owen Brown over there in Studio B. Oh, where are they going? I'm Owen is in Studio B. Where's Owen? Let's see Owen in Studio B there. All right, yes, Owen Brown is in Studio B. All right, so we're gonna switch in. We're gonna switch in from A and B as we go into today's idiot thing with the Rooty Absolutely feature. And before we go, uh, we must. Uh, we had an idiot thing yesterday about the National Water Commission, where they repaired um, pipes in Seabright Gardens on the seven on the twentieth of uh, November, and the pipes began leaking on the twenty fifth, five days later. But that idiot thing. Now turn into roots absolutely <laughs> because we cannot announce that the water commission came last night on the twenty fifth. We made we made a report um yesterday in the day they came in the night and they repaired the pipe and we go there this morning there was no water running on Amin Drive <laughs> so we can now turn that idiot thing from the water commission into a roots absolutely they came on Amin Drive last night repaired the pipes. And there's absolutely no leaking now on Amin Drive's water commission at South. Right? So we can say roots absolutely for the water commission. They came and and uh, uh, they repaired the pipes and absolutely no leaking now on Amin Drive. So at South, there are two National Water Commission uh, for um, responding promptly um, to our cry for Saving, saving for saving water and they did just that so hats on to water commission that is really an idiot thing um transformed almost overnight into a root say absolutely all right uh, 96 0.2 fm i think oh, we're going to switch out to studio we have going live we're going to go to studio b and join owen brown now in studio b and see you now owen brown Yeah, right. So, <laughs> right. Uh, the roots, absolutely. That's the roots, absolutely. Because I, I'm sure they're probably were listening yesterday and saying, you know, man, again, yeah. yeah <laughs> because we were saying, you know, the NWC must have been frustrated with this era, uh, you know, coming back to the same spot again. But, you know, kudos to them. It's Thanksgiving Day, so we're giving uh, thanks for, for that gesture. Uh, you know, they came last night and ensure that, you know, the water isn't wa being wasted because right now, you know, every drop counts. Uh, we know that we have a, a good amount in the reservoir now, so we're giving thanks for that. Uh, but the thing is, if we if we continuously have, you know, different leaks here and there, then we will be having a major issue when it comes down to distribution of water. So uh, we're hoping that we can, and the NWC, the water resource management people, can you know manage the water as best as possible so next year when it comes down to a more drier time you know january february mm -hmm. that we are able to say yes we, we are controlling uh you know the amount of water that they have and how it is that they're being distributed so that's what we say absolutely mm -hmm. uh another route absolutely we, we we had it in our um city beat city beat earlier and you know it is something that you know, I definitely can say, you know, it's really a good look, a good move uh, for them to have purchased these three facilities. I'm telling you, um, they probably have to create and have more because I know a lot of women um, who yeah. are probably in a situation now where they're actually, they don't know where else to go. They don't have any other, you know, avenue. Probably they, they don't have any other family member that they can go to uh, or anybody else. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's good that the Ministry of Gender, you know, Entertainment, Sports, Culture said, guess what, we're going to go in and protect the most the vulnerable and, you know, especially the women who mm. are, you know, now facing abuse. Mm. Uh, hoping to hear more about that and, you know, the facilities and how they, are, they will be available to persons, uh, each woman and you know, a bit of improvement. And I think what they should also um, have a part of this uh, project is that um, also based on the age and stuff, they can have some level of remedial 
uh, you know, things there. So essentially, if it is that they can sponsor some of them to say go to Heart Trust or some of them to, to, to get a subject or something like that, to empower the women in order for them to be independent, uh, I think having also a, a, an aspect in that, uh, you know, persons, if they're being, being housed and having them there, at least giving them a way of um, earning something afterwards or getting a skill, you know, for them to have something, you know, going forward. So it's then you're there, you're there for say three, four years or two years or a year, you know, you're then able to go to, whether it's um, Jamal, whether it's um, JFLL, sorry, um, whether it is um, to, to other is hard trust NTA, getting a skill, get a certification, um, you know, going back to an institution that they can do subjects, something that can empower the young women and give them the independence that they need. So it's a good look. And that, that, that's just my suggestion to add to yes. the progress that's already uh, been made when it comes down to, um, you know, women who are in that situation. All so, right. And, we'll see. and for... Mike, yeah. Okay, all right. And for persons, I just left. I don't kind of let them know by don't say for persons who I get, I get a call from a lady. I shot short right after, after I finish. I get a call from a young lady. Said she knows she she has a friend who is in that situation, and she want a number to help her. So I'm gonna um give her. You no, know, see that you get off here. I get, I have her number. So when I call her, I give her the number. So anybody else who want the number, the number is currently um repeated twice in the video. My Olivia Bob's Grange, and also repeated by Dr. Burke. Just go to our, uh, our online page. It's, it's a YouTube, and just type in "shelter for abused women and children." No, a reality in Jamaica. Just type it. Just go to WDT Media TV, and type in "shelter for abused women and children." Is now a reality in Jamaica, and the video will come up. And the numbers are well, numbers was announced um, in that video. So you can see the numbers there for the person who want to who know persons who are in the situation and want the assistance because once they call that down those numbers and you're in a they're in the abuse situation, they can take you out and, and house you in a place where you'll be, where you'll be comfortable. So the minister said she gets called personally, but she wants you to call now the professionals who can offer the, she, she can offer kind of advice that you really want. So she sets your prayers are in place to give you your advice and also to remove you and put you in one of three shelters in Jamaica. So if you're in a situation and you want to get out, just go to the video, WDT Media TV, and type in shelter for abused women and children. Now a reality in Jamaica. And you see the numbers are announced um, during the video. So just go there and see the video and get the numbers. All right. So that's a root thing. Absolutely. And that one is a, a really, a really roots indeed. Mm -hmm. Here also another roots absolutely where the Digital Foundation they have uh, assisted the University Hospital of the West Indies um, to purchase plasma exchange Roots machine, FM. and you know they, they donated some eight point five yes. million dollars uh, to the University Hospital of the West Indies for this plasma unit quite interesting um, and it's a it's a root absolutely for us here um you know in our in our in our uh, feature so they were saying that the foundation um gave them the boost of 8.5 million dollars um, which will enhance the hospital's ability to actually administer plasma treatment to covid 19 patients so uh this is another aspect of you know combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the digital group's uh, chairman Dennis O'Brien, he handed over the symbolic check um, at the headquarters on Tuesday. And this is really a really absolutely the story. Wow, this is this is happening here. Yes. Um I got a second call again for this for the number again, but apparently I don't have them with me now in studio. I left it down to the office. But um, okay, I took the person number, so I will give the person number off here. But for those who want to like know, just go to the video I said to you earlier and get the numbers. I don't have it with me now in studio. But just go to the video. Numbers were announced twice in the video by Olivia Babsy Grange and also by Dr. Brown Burke.
It's uh, WDT Media TV, and type in shelter for abused women and children, now a reality. And numbers are, have been, been announced in that video. I don't have it I know on me now. I left, 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 them, um, left them downstairs. I don't rush, rush them downstairs. So calls coming for persons who want the numbers. So that's a good move there by the both minister and also by the opposition. So they're, they're both working together in tandem for Jamaica women. And that's a good look. That, that's, that's really rude. To know what's happening with mm -hmm. that, so Ruth, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in another story, uh, an update here: uh, the bail application uh, is to be made next month for the five women who were um, actually charged with the beating of 17-year-old Kayla, and they were in court mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so they were actually remanded, and they are awaiting their next court date to see how best they can put in their bail application according to their attorney. You know. Apparently, there wasn't enough uh, for them to actually get the bail yesterday. So, according to the attorney, they were served with the statement in the matter, and uh, they will have to take some time to actually make an assessment of the file and actually prepare properly for the application of bail. And their attorney, Peter Shankari, he is the person um, that made that statement. So, we will hear more about this, and uh, we'll get further updates. Um, on that she, um, Kayla is still in the hospital. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're still awaiting further updates yeah. as to, you know, her condition. But, you know, a lot of persons are praying and, you know, we've got uh, news that she has been responding right, to her yeah. mother. Mm -hmm. um, not sure, we haven't gotten any further updates from that, mm -hmm. uh, but we know that she has been responding, you know, some of the movement and we're glad for that. I know that the, the, the hospital was actually waiting on uh, some level of improvement in order for them to go ahead with um, the MRI, because they are saying based on her state at the time, uh, you know, she would not be able to come off the machine for 30 minutes and the MRI, they would want at least 30 minutes, uh, you know, for them to go ahead with the scan and all of that. Um, so they are saying until she has improved uh, you know, our medical condition has improved. They cannot really do the MRI. So we have to know if an MRI has been done uh, or if it is that they are still awaiting a more improvement in order for them to go ahead uh, with that scan. But, you know, prayers are continuously going up for her and, you know, everybody's watching and waiting to see what's happening. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, and also as well, the young, the young, um, child who was mauled by dogs in St. Anne and is, and is currently in hospital in in New York and when the, time, the first surgery went well and he's also doing well as well. The first surgery went well, I've been told and he's in high spirits and they're hoping that it will, be, it will take a while but they're hoping that um, all the best for him and his, and his mother will be with him in, in, in Bronx, New York. The first surgery went well and we saw him, we saw images images of him um, overseas and he's waving looking happy but we're hoping that um his other um treatments and follow-up will go well as we expect and he can at least um return to at least full fitness in the very near future wish him all the best this young guy was mauled by dogs in saint anne so again wish all the best there for him as he tried to recuperate over there in the us and getting um, some good treatment i've been told a report uh, from a U.S. media house, and it was quite interesting. Uh, the, the man said he was attacked by a six pit bull. I don't know if it was so much, you know, but you know, he was saying it was six pit bull. Uh, somewhere along the line, probably there was other information that we don't know, but we know that it was we 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 got information that it was for for dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe he has more information, but he's saying that he's a nice bird. They saw the story, they went ahead, um, got um, funding, uh, ensure that. You know, they got all expense paid, uh, you know, trip to the U.S. to get the surgery done. The, the amount for the surgery was also paid for. So, you know, it's a really absolute story. And the mother is really thanking everyone and the medical okay. team for their assistance. Uh, I also have something. I, I have something else here very quickly um, yes. where this report um, has, has come in to say that um, at about 8 o'clock, Last evening, ah. a bus carrying passengers to Spanish to Town, um, they actually stopped along Mandela Highway. Uh, and in Hello? this report, it, it said that they picked Hello? up they three men 
uh, they requested to stop, to actually stop at Central Village, right? Um, when the driver complied, all three men, when they said they wanted to stop, okay, I think, I think we, have a, we have a caller. Hello? Yeah, hello? Yeah. Yes, I don't tell you that God is a miracle working God now. Yes, 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 yes go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. that girl life. Yes, I'm telling you. I did not go by that body to serve God with them. Yes. I have to love Jesus. Yes. Yes, God bless you. You make your call me. Oh, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. All right, then you call me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. thank you. Thank you. So she's saying yes, man. Miracle work, yes, man. Definitely. Yeah, man. God is at work. God is at work. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Ensuring that their their lives are preserved and they're good, and they're safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and prayers are continuously going up for them. I'm sure you know persons are really um, praying for them and also their families at this time. So thank you so much for the call. Thank you so much for the call. Right. So I I was I was making reference to to the story. Um, of an incident last night where three men, they uh, stopped a bus with passengers heading to Spanish Town. Mm -hmm. um, they stopped the bus along Mandela Highway. Um, they requested to actually stop um, near a uh, bus near uh, Central Village, rather. Uh, when the driver complied, when they stopped the bus, and the man said, I must stop. Uh, the men actually took guns. Mm -hmm. Brandished guns, they, they robbed the conduct house some four thousand dollars. The other um person pulled up the driver. Um and during that incident, he said that the driver pulled his license firearm and opened fire at the man who jumped from the bus. Mm -hmm. Right? The police was summoned and during a search of the area, two of the men were found dead, one of them still clutching. Are clinching on um on, on the gun. Wow. And the third man later th turned up at the Spanish Town Hospital with gunshot wounds to the right shoulder. He was treated um and released into the custody of the police. So all those three they, they came on the bus, they hold up the bus. Mm. Thankfully, the driver had his license for license firearm. Well, him good, he picked two of them, and the <laughs> other one, right, he got injured, mm. and the police, because, you know, he, he wants to get treatment, yeah, whereas yeah. when he go to the hospital, right, mm, yeah, he right. get the shot, mm. right? So, the third one, um, actually, yeah, was, 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 was held after getting treatment. Wow, it's a brave um, bus driver, and that, and you're actually robbers. Yeah. Wow. One, yeah. Get it getting more serious though with this robbery in Jamaica and this crime and bro. Oh. It it then no big big the question with like America had they, everybody have the, the, the right to be at mm -hmm. I, I don't I w I'm saying it would it would be a good and a bad thing if everybody have a license for um to be a bad and a good thing because we are too aggressive when it comes to certain things. The first thing we think more of it. We might have more, we might have more so, Yeah, it would be over and over during this year where licensed firearm owners, they have, uh, you know, either thwarted some level of robbery, um, thwarted some other incidents. Uh, unfortunately, we've heard where one was, was shot, but um, I think more persons should. I'm not saying everybody because if if it's like America, then we will have a big problem here. Uh, mm. Where if a man step on a man toe, the first thing <laughs> might do, you know, right? Let's go I, yeah, I think we have to work on our temper before we can even, uh, our, our legislators can even think about um, say, guess what? Everybody go ahead and you can't get a gun. No, no, no. That would be a major problem. Well, an well um, another, another big news now out of the world uh, the new vaccine that is now um, being tested. But the, the thing though, for me though, I don't think that um, the manufacturer of these vaccines should be the one doing the testing. You should have independence for better scrutiny because there's a race now to make everybody want their vaccine to be the vaccine. So I think there should be independent persons to verify 
the safety of these vaccines, not the person who are, are manufacturing them. That was just my take on the whole thing because, I mean, it's like a competition going on now. Who can, who vaccine can be the chosen one? No, in fact, that's too. Um, Oxford, in their, in their, <clears throat> in their latest report, mm -hmm. and they're talking to, to, even though they're not saying theirs is over 95, like, oh, you know, and first, Pfizer yeah. and, and Moderna <laughs> was saying, because Pfizer was saying 91st, and then he came back and said 95, you know, competing with what the other um, pharmaceutical or, or, um, doctors were saying. But Oxford said, guess what? Their positive positivity rate is between 70 to 90 percent yeah they're not saying 90 and over right there's like between 70 and 90 percent and what makes theirs a bit different is the storage of their um vaccine with mm -hmm. pfizer and and uh, moderna it's extreme you have to be below 70 degrees so you have to be freezing freezing temperature me, me you have not, to be in the freezer to store but not full yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so storage is one issue and then distribution distributing that um vaccine would be a challenge because you have to have a a, a freezer truck that can go really below um the, the zero mm -hmm. right but oxford was saying there's the storage is very good you can store it um in any normal cool area and all of that but we'll see if you know they will actually get an emergency um go ahead because both of them are about, about three of them have so far applied for emergency rollout. Some say they want it by December. Uh, some say they want it by the end of December. Uh, but we don't know. We're yeah. just watching to see how this will play out or pan out ah. in the next few few months. Because somewhere along the line, the vaccine will be out. But it's then, <laughs> you know, getting it here, because Jamaica, we're in everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want that. But you know, <laughs> we I, so for me, I, I'm it's a watch and see. It's a watch and see. All know. right. All right. So on that note, now I know about out of time now for the roots absolutely the idiot thing feature. And again, the must say hats off to the National Water Commission um for the role they played in preparing the pipes a day after we made the announcement that the pipe had been leaking after five days. And we can say now that the pipes at Amin Drive is not leaking, but we still see holes. Um, at at this that um, NWC now, it's more like NWA <laughs> Works Agency, and they repaired a section of Hagley Park Road on the same day, on December twenty. Right there in Hagley Park Road, just across from a whole drive, there are two holes in the road, two sinking in the road right now. So NWA, no, that NWA, not NWA, not NWC now. You can go back there and look at that section there at Maho Drive where. And there's two, I think it's about um, a foot in diameter, two holes there. And as vehicle pass that area, it's getting worse and worse. So NWA, take a look at that part of the roadway. It was repaired on the November 20, and it's now two holes are there. <laughs> so, all right, so NWA, you're a title, not NWC this time. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I think on that note, and thanks for our crew there on YouTube for looking on to us live. So on that note, uh, we come now to the end of the idiot thing with the roots the absolute feature. It's now the 60.1 on this your FM dial. Coming soon to Roots and the 6.1 FM, the 3 to 1 special.